بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الله Last week we started studying different ways in which you can develop an honorable character. One can strengthen one's dignity and honor. So we said there are some factors that we have no control over them, okay? It's not that we can change the whole world. Sometimes even you cannot change the closest people to you, okay? Sometimes you have difficulties even with the people who are around you. Sometimes you have difficulty with the society in which you live, but still you have enough means and power to develop an honorable character and have a meaningful life. So Allah has given us enough of power and control to decide what type of life I want to have. So you can be wife of Fir'aun and have an honorable life. And you can be son of Nuh and decide not to have honorable life. So it's up to you. There can be, as I said, problems, but those problems cannot stop you if you want to be successful, if you want to have falah, which is success and salvation. So we said those things that we should work on them are these things. These are the things that you have control. You cannot say, I couldn't. One is to know yourself. This is very important. How much time we spend on learning physics, chemistry, I don't know, biology, maths, history, or for example, to learn another language. Why we don't spend the same, if not more, on knowing ourselves? <clears throat> Amir al in a hadith says, I am surprised, I am wondering why when people who lose something, they go after it and they have no rest till they find. But they don't go after themselves. They don't try to discover themselves. Yeah? It seems that, unfortunately, if something has been lost for a short period of time, we go for it. But if something has been always lost, we don't look for it. Yeah? So if a person, for example, last week or last month has lost his father or mother, goes for it, for him or her. But if someone has, from the time of birth, lost his father or mother, doesn't go for it. It doesn't make sense. You have to be even more determined. In all our life, unfortunately, we have not discovered ourselves. The same is with Imam Zaman. Unfortunately, because we have always been not in touch with him, then we don't go after him. But if something we miss today, then we go after it. So this is very bad that we get used to not having proper 
access to Imam Zaman, not knowing ourselves, not knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not having good connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, we have to quickly try to discover ourselves. We talked about this. Also, we said, in addition to the general information, general knowledge, understanding about human beings and the great world which is inside us, every person also has to know about his or her own conditions. Because there are things which are common between us, and also each person has his own conditions. For example, our talents may differ. Our weaknesses may differ. Our strengths may be different. What can be the best thing for me to do may be not the best thing for you to do. Okay? So you cannot just imitate other people. You cannot all do the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in the way that each person is unique. Every person is unique. There are many things that we share, but still every person is unique. Sometimes, you know, I say that Allah has not mass produced us. You know, it's not that a factory that has product line, 1,000 or 100,000 or 1 million cars come out. They are all the same. Every human being is unique. And every human being also for Allah is unique. Allah doesn't say, I have billions of them. So if a few millions of them, you know, get lost, it's not important. No, Allah is not like a bad shepherd. A good shepherd, even if one sheep is missing, goes after that. Okay? A father or mother, even if you have many children... All your children are for you important, and each of them are unique for you. Yes? You don't say, because I have many children, so my attention for them is less. No. You have attention for all of them. Of course, we are human beings. Still, our time has to be divided. Maybe our love is not divided, but our time has to be divided. Yeah? The amount of Understanding that I have about them might be divided because we are human beings. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yashqalhu sha'nun and sha'n. So he has full attention for every single human being. As if he has no other. There is hadith Qudsi which says that I treat you as if I don't have any other servant. Anytime you want to come to me, I am available. But you treat me as you have many lords other than me. And you don't have anyone else. So it's very unfair. Our relation with Allah is very unfair. And especially knowing our weakness and our need. You know, sometimes you can have unfair relation with someone who needs you. You say, because you need me. I decide about the terms. But Allah is giving us all the things and is obliging us with his favors and still we don't maintain fair relation with him. The way we treat Allah, if we treat any person in the world, he would not speak with us. Definitely. Even the kindest people, they would not speak with us again. So, Every person is unique. Every person has to discover what are the talents, the opportunities, or maybe the problems for him or her. This is also very important. And if you find out those things, you can be very successful. Maybe in one area you have problem, but you can have many other areas. So you shouldn't feel that you cannot do anything, you cannot achieve anything, you are useless, and so on and so forth. The other thing that is very important, 
one of the things can that can help you to have an honorable and strong character and this Ezza and strength come together. You remember when we talked about Ezza and Quwwa? And we said the only quality of Allah that comes before Ezza is Qawi. Qawi and Aziz. Otherwise, normally Aziz comes first and other things come after. Quwwa and Ezza are very much related. <coughs> if you want to have that strength and that Ezza, because the people who are weak, they are not feeling honorable. You should try to maintain good relations with other people. A person who has not developed social skills and cannot have good relation with other people, then automatically this will be reflected in himself as a kind of weakness. You know, if you are successful in social life, then inside you also you feel powerful. So this is one of the things that parents and teachers and educators should try to teach. How you can be in society successful. We should not say, just make relation with everyone. This is not working. There are many wolves around. <laughs> but also we cannot you know, frighten our children about going to society. Okay, so we need to teach them how to go to the society, especially in our own community, which is like our family, how to be successful in maintaining friendship and good relation with other people. If because of lack of skills, if because of lack of experiences, you have few bad experiences, then not only in your social life you will suffer, also in your personal life you will suffer. Some of the people have dark image of the world. Why? Because the world is dark? No. Because they have always had bad experiences. So, especially as a child, if you have few bad experiences, then you think the whole world is chaos. If you have good experiences, you think the whole world is heaven. You need to have, of course, a balanced image of the world but in general the world is more good than being bad you should have more hope than fear a moment when it comes to life I think should have more hope more optimism you cannot say 50% optimism 50% pessimism this is pessimism then it's not optimism <laughs> You have to be optimistic, you have to be hopeful, you have to be positive, because this world belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? We are not in a world which has no Lord. This is the world full of angels. This is the world full of light. There are darknesses, but they are not that strong. This ayah in the Quran is very beautiful when it comes to shaitan. Allah says, the plan of shaitan is very weak. Who makes shaitan strong? We make shaitan strong. Why? Because we want to say, you know, I have very strong enemy. If you see I am being defeated, because, because my enemy is very strong. So this is a way to justify our failure. But shaitan is not that strong. Shaitan is strong for the people who are weak. For the people who don't want to strengthen themselves. Okay? And I'm sure shaitan laughs at us when he sees that how we obey him so easily. Why you are repeating mistakes? You must have learned by now that I am shaitan, I am your enemy. Why you listen to me? Anyway. Every person needs to be able to make good relations with other people in society so that in himself or herself feels strength, honorable, and can be confident. 
not confident in a negative sense that you think that you don't need Allah. Confident in a good sense that you don't need other people. Okay? So this is very important. I think once I told you, I don't know was it this class or another class, that childhood is very important. Childhood. Your experience in childhood somehow defines your future. I'm not saying 100%, but it's very difficult to compensate for the damage which is caused in childhood. Because your childhood is like a reserve for your future. Okay? If you have had happy childhood, if you have been receiving care, love from everyone around you in childhood, if you have been praised in your childhood, this is a reserve for all your life. If you had terrible childhood, then it's very difficult to get rid of it. It's not impossible, it's very difficult. So this adds to the responsibility of the parents and the society. When it comes to children, you have to be very much caring and loving and supporting your children. Why Islam says, for example, for seven years treat them as your masters? Because that's the most critical time for them adding to the reserve. They should feel that they are wanted, they are loved, they are given everything that they want so that they don't feel any negativity later in their life. Because a child is not a, like an adult. An adult person can understand that, for example, I want something from my father and he cannot afford. Okay? Or, for example, my father sometimes may get angry, may get tired. So I shouldn't ex expect from him to be always, you know, coming uh, nice or, you know, being caring and loving and smiling. A child can understand, uh, cannot understand this. If you even just pretend that you don't love your child, it's destructive. <coughs> because they look at the parents as their God. You remember this hadith we had that when you promise your children, you must keep your promise because they think you are their Lord, their sustainer. So the parents have to give <coughs> unlimited, unconditional love and support to the children. Of course, there are times that you have to discipline them very nicely, very carefully. When they understand the reason, when they don't interpret it as you don't love them, okay? So the, the more they grow, you have more chance of bringing discipline because then they can understand. They, my parents love me, but they don't want me to do this. When they are younger, it's very difficult for them to distinguish what is the reason for asking me not to do this thing. They think you don't love them, okay? Like, for example, you know, if your child wants to play with something, okay, and you want to take away from him, the child may not understand that this is because it's dangerous. He may think that you don't love him. You are causing trouble for him. It's very difficult to deal with children. So, every person in his childhood or her childhood should build a reserve from which for all his life he can benefit. And alhamdulillah, we see that most of the cases, Allah has made the hearts of parents so full of love for us, that for us, the most loving people are our parents. And everyone for him and her normally is the, his or her own parents. And you wonder if every parent is the best, how is it possible? My parents is the best, your parents is the best, everyone says my mother is the best, my father is the best, normally. This is because everyone has received so much of love from his father and mother or her father and mother that feels that nothing was left out, nothing was, you know, neglected. 
So everyone thinks that his or her parents are the best. Anyway, the children should be taught how to be optimistic, how to be hopeful, how to be positive. And part of it depends on the way you treat them. Part of it depends on how you teach them. Part of it depends on the circles around them, the friends, the cousins, the people with whom they play, and so on and so forth. Another thing which is very important is to have some goals in our life. If you don't have any goal in your life, then you cannot see any success. You know, if, if someone is going around and doesn't have any destination, he's not reaching anywhere. You have to have some goals that you say, okay, I have 10 steps towards my goal. I have nine steps towards, I have eight steps. If you don't have set up any goal, your life is boring and you don't feel you have achieved anything. And this sense of not being successful, not achieving anything is very destructive. So we have to set up goals for ourselves, which are of course realistic, which are manageable, which can be measured so that you know, have you made progress or not? And second, when you make a progress, then you can build upon that success and make another success. It's very important to make success and then answer. This gives you internal power. You know, like months of Ramadan. After months of Ramadan, we all feel powerful. Say, so one month I was able to fast in normal days, even for a few hours, if we don't drink, drink and eat, we feel you know, very bad. It's for the people who have not experienced, impossible. But Alhamdulillah, we see it's possible. We can be fasting for one month, 20 hours. So it shows that we can make other successful experiences. Yeah? So if you have good successful uh, stories, then you feel powerful, you feel strong, you feel dignified, and you feel that you can face challenges. So it's very important to give tasks to children that they can manage to finish it and gain credit for it. Then they become, you know, determined to do more success. But if they are always blamed for <laughs> not doing anything, then they think that I am a useless person. So in a sense, they may even become arrogant. You know, those who are arrogant normally are the people who are weak. The people who have had no success in their life, have not had good r relation with other people, they become arrogant. <laughs> the people who have been very successful and have been had, uh, had a good relation with people, they become humble. It's opposite to what we normally think. We think uh, arrogant people are very strong. Arrogant people are very weak in their personality. Another thing is we should be able to accept and indeed welcome criticism. If you want to be successful, if you want to have a strong character, a strong character in a good sense, not in a bad sense, because some people when say they are strong, I mean they are imposing. I don't mean imposing. I mean that strong in the sense of there is no weakness. Then one of the best things is to welcome criticism. When people give you their honest comments, which can be positive or can be negative, which can be encouragement or can be criticism, you should welcome. Because it's better to receive criticism from your friends than not receiving criticism and continuing your mistakes and then you fail. Which one is better? 
Do you want to fail in your life? Or you want to receive nice, kind criticism from your friends so that you improve yourself? Not only we should welcome criticism, we should actually encourage people. Please, if there is anything negative in me, please let me know. أحب إخواني إلي من أحدى إلي عيوبي. إمام صادق عليه السلام said, the dearest friend of mine, <coughs> brothers of mine, are the people who give me as a gift my عيوب, <coughs> my faults. <coughs> they give it to me, not they give it to other people. Unfortunately, some people go to other people and give me their, uh, my, uh, give my uh, problems to them. It's not good. أَحْدَى إِلَيَّ عُيُوبِ You should give me my own faults, not give other people. Not to cover for me. In front of others, you cover my problems. Yeah? A good brother or sister would not let other people know my problems. But with me, you have to be honest. You have to tell me my problems. If these problems especially are not just Sometimes problem is between me and the other person. And it doesn't affect my relation with other people. So maybe you can compromise. But if it is a problem that can happen many times with many people. So you have to say. Maybe your child has a problem and it's only with you. Okay, you can be silent. But if your child is going to have this problem with other people. Then you have to tell your child somehow. But how to say it and, you know, how often to say it and, you know, when to say it, that's another issue. But I'm saying that you have to say. So you not only welcome when people come for criticism, you actually encourage them for criticism. If you receive these kind criticisms, then you would not be surprised by failure by people shouting at you it's better if someone nicely comes and says to you than in the public people shout on you you know some like some political parties if they let their own party members to criticize then they will not lose election <laughs> but if there is no internal criticism then they may lose the election Even people may come to the street and shout against them. You have a question? Yeah, what if you want to warn someone about someone else? If they have a characteristic which might cause problems and you want to warn someone uh, to avoid it? It depends. First of all, it's better if you can ask the person himself to uh, stop. But if someone comes to you for mashwara for you know consultation and if you don't give him the advice that person can get into trouble then that's another issue and here uh, there are many details many technicalities so it depends on what is your position are you now a person who has been asked for advice or are you a person who is there to help his brother who has problem to uh, stop his problems okay so it depends in the end you should find what is the most pleasing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay as a mushawir as a consultant i have to give my honest opinion and if you cannot give your honest opinion don't accept to be consultant Okay, someone comes and asks you for your idea about marrying someone. If you cannot give the honest answer, so don't accept to give answer. You cannot give a dishonest answer or you cannot hide part of the truth if you think that truth has to be known by this person. But uh, sometimes you think that it's better if I just keep away because... If I say this, then that person is not never getting married, for example, or you know. So you have to find, you know, many modalities are here.
Another important thing is to control your emotions and feelings, especially anger, jealousy. If we are driven by our emotions, we can never be 100% happy because emotions are very quick in change. They change very fast. And emotions are the thing that you don't have that much control. Yeah? Emotions can e easily be triggered by other people or other things. People cannot change easily your beliefs. People cannot easily change your traits of character. But people can easily change your emotions. Yeah? You know, you just in the morning go out of home and you see a person is passing by and says something bad to you. You have hijab, for example, and someone, you know, maybe bullies you. Okay, this is not what you can stop. Maybe you get very sad. You get, I don't know, angry. But you should not let these emotions take you to what you don't want to go. Yeah? You should not be carried by these. You should have control over emotions. Otherwise, your whole day is damaged. And maybe also you do bad things. You make bad decisions. Maybe you go to work and then you try to put your anger on someone else. Because you have received <laughs> bad, you know, treatment. Now you want to give it to someone else. You think that in this way you can get rid of it. <laughs> which is not helping at all. But unfortunately, some people have this. They think if they have received the virus, they can pass it on to someone else so that they don't have the virus. But this is not the way to solve the problem. So, if we don't resist against emotions which are not rational, which are not based on good reasons, which are not in our control and are just driven by emotions, then it would be very difficult to have a stable life. You have to be in control of your emotions. A rational person, a person who is aql, is the one that his emotions are not rebelling against his aql. For example, some people only eat the food that it is delicious. They like it. So, for example, you say, take some vegetable with your food. They say, I don't like vegetables. Oh, but vegetable is good for your health. Whether you like it or not, you have to eat. You have to like it. Allah has given us the power that if we know something is good, we can start loving it. If you are in control of your emotions, and you know something is good for your health, then you have to start loving it, at least liking it. If you don't love it, at least like it. And if something is bad, you should not eat it and take it. <coughs> Aql is the one that his emotions follow his understanding, or at least don't rebel against it. If it's not... <laughs> originating from your aql, at least should not rebel against your aql. <clears throat> this is the minimum. Many times, people can make our life miserable through our emotions. Because our emotions, as I said, can be easily triggered by other people. So, it's, you know, like, for example, imagine you have an army. In your army, you have different ranks of soldiers. Some are very loyal to you. Some are middle, middle <coughs> position. Some are not that much loyal to you. Okay? You are always about these people who are not very loyal to you. 
Every person has an army. You know, we have junood al-aql, junood al-jahl, army of aql. Our emotions are the weakest soldiers that we have in the battle against shaitan and our enemies. Our emotions are the weakest ones and can easily be bought by enemies. You know, so you have to be con f fully controlling and observing your emotions. Unfortunately, some people only have emotions. And this is something that I am also worried about some people in our community. They only invest on emotions. Majalis, only emotions. Either laughing or crying. C clapping or shedding tears. No ma'rifa, no understanding, no listening, reflection, meditation, discussion, mubahasa, no. <laughs> <laughs> Only emotions. This, in short term, is good. With respect to the things that are completely known to you, it's good. This type of emotions will never make you a soldier of Yazid. Because you know Yazid, so with Yazid you don't have problem. But then, if a modern Yazid comes who knows how to play with your emotions, then you cannot stay away from modern Yazid. But if there is aql and ma'rifa, and you go beyond your emotions, you say, I don't let you to play with my emotions. For a weak man, is there any practical way to control his or her emotions? Any practical way to start from? Few things. The first thing is to develop your intellectual capacity. Aql. This aql is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much in the Quran praises ulul albab. Who are ulul albab? It's not that every human being is ulul albab. Yes, we all have brain or we all have mind. Or we all have aql. But this is not ulul albab. You know, there are people, sometimes I use this example. If you have a car, but you walk. So we cannot say you have car. If we have agl, but we don't use our agl, and we are driven by emotion, we are not ulul albab. Yeah? Ulul albab are the people that they listen to their agl. Aql is their guide. Aql is ruling over them. Not that Hawa'i ghalib wa aql-i maghloob. So, if you want to develop your aql, one thing is knowledge. Knowledge is like weapons for aql. It's like... Uh, what do you call uh, the ah uh, yes we say muhimmat ammunition so knowledge is very important but again if knowledge is not used then it's not changing the battle there are some type of knowledge that we are not using they can become trouble you know like, for example, imagine if you are fighting and around me is lots of, you know, ammunition and, you know, m uh, missiles and, you know, all these things around me and I'm not using them. The enemy can burn uh, these things, put fire into these things and I will be killed. If my knowledge is not used, shaitan can use my knowledge against me. Yeah. Means he is killed by his own bullet. Okay? So, so it's important how you treat. So knowledge is very important, but the knowledge which is put into practice. Thinking. There is nothing like thinking. We must be people of thinking. Tafakkur. Tafakkuru sa'ah afdal min ibadat as-sana 
or setina sana or sabrina sana. Thinking for saa. Saa doesn't mean 60 minutes. Saa means for some time. Yeah. If you think for a while, is better than ibada of one year or 60 years or 70 years. Real thinking. Not that you just waste your time. Real thinking should come with some products, some results. Sometimes we don't want to do anything, so we say, I am thinking. No, you think you are thinking. Thinking is that you start with a subject, you have collected information about it, and you are trying to analyze and come up with a better understanding. Pardon? <laughs> and Mubahasa helps. <laughs> If your partner in Mubayasa is also a person of thinking, it helps. So, you know, one of ulama was asked, can you give an example of thinking that is better than worship of 60 years or 70 years? He said, like thinking of Hor on the day of Ashura. That's better than Ibadah of 70 years. Maybe better than Ibadah of 1,000 years. That type of thinking. Not thinking the whole day, what should I eat tonight? Should I eat pizza or, you know, I eat, you know, fried chicken? No, this is not thinking that we are talking about. The thinking that can change your life. Okay? So, tafakkur is very important. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَعِذُكُمْ بِوَاحِدَةٌ أَن تَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ مَثْنَى وَفُرَادًا ثُمَّ تَتَفَكَّرُوا Tell them I give you one mu'izah, one advice. There is no need to give you two mu'izah. I give you one mu'izah. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَعِذُكُمْ بِوَاحِدَةٌ and taqumu lillah to stand up to rise for the sake of Allah, either one by one or in two. So, if there is someone that you can stand up for Allah together, it's better. If not, at least alone. Thumma tatafakkaru, and then thinking. You must think. A mu'min is always thinking. And it's only with thinking that you can understand better, you can absorb what you know, you can find solutions, you can find out mistakes. Thinking is very important and keeps you always fresh. So these are few things that can help you against your emotions. Knowledge, practicing, thinking, and of course, Mubahasa. <laughs> this ayah refers to Mubahasa. Or Okay? Okay, I think the time is over. Inshallah, we continue next week.